Wait till the next morning, 8 a.m. Easy enough feet. We can do that. Oh, I didn't realize the direction I was facing in. I thought I was facing uh, south. I very much am not. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, sorry. This is not where I thought it was. It's time. It's time. Ah. Let's go meet and Kali at the crafty Hello. Bench. That's why I felt like I was in the wrong direction. I thought I was facing this way. I'm really not. Anywho, hello, <laughs> I'm right here. Hey, we're here! Traveler, Paimon, great timing. We got a lot of letters in the mailbox, and I just finished sorting them into four groups. Nice work! Well, the real work hasn't even started yet. Hmm. Which batch of letters should we read through first? The ones pertaining to the first clue of the riddle? Should we not just go in order? Joy above the clouds. Am I going to have to do a significant amount of reading here? Are you guys just going to like read it for me and paraphrase? Take a look at the clue board and read the letters. Sweet baby Jesus. Read letters about a flower that is not of this world. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say they're nice and short, but then I know it was a school pile. <laughs> After our conversation the other day, I went over the prophecy's wording carefully. A flower that is not of this world sounds more like a logical paradox. Think about it. If a, shouldn't be capitalized, if a flower is not of this world, its existence cannot be perceived. Yes, but the thought of it can be perceived, even if the existence itself cannot. However, if it can be perceived, it is not, it will not fit the description of the prophecy. As such, my view is that this riddle's answer doesn't have to be a real plant. However, I must also note, with all due respect, that the person who came up with this riddle may not know all the plants in the world, and I dare say that no one could make such a claim. From this perspective, you could even think of some rare plants as potential candidates for the answer. Attached is a list of rare plant species. I've added a short description to each entry, and I hope you can find your answer within them. Best of wishes to you, Dignati. Your answer was useless. Thank you. Albedo. A flower that is not of this world doesn't sound like an existing species or something created through specialized cultivation techniques. With that noted, I believe we should think out of the box. Yay, this sounds promising. After reviewing what I've learned over the years, I have now reached a conclusion. Sucris also came to discuss her thoughts with me. She hasn't yet decided on an answer at the moment of me writing this letter, so I won't be revealing my own conclusion right now. Well, that's not very helpful to me, thanks. We can discuss it in detail when we meet. Okay, so obviously we pick Albedo as the answer to this one, and I hope everyone else will bring their respective answers too. I'll see you then. Albedo. It feels strange to insert a letter into the mailbox that I made myself, but I did find my answer. At first, I thought that a flower created using alchemy would constitute one that is not of this world, according to the prophecy. And after giving it some more thought, I realized that instead of creating an actual plant, a flower-shaped mechanism made of alchemical products might fit the description better. I highly disagree, but you do you. So I arrived at my conclusion, a clock in the shape of a flower that's lame. I don't agree with your uh, conclusion. The long passage of life brushes past the timepiece, leaving fluttering petals in its wake. The elapsing years stir up the leaves, pushing the needle of time forward. So gross, that is poetic but dumb. Next! A guide who will never get lost. Moon. No one can confidently say that they will never get lost, but as long as their wish to guide and help others does not waver, they will become a ship that can traverse the waves eternally. I didn't perform any divination before writing this letter, but I have a feeling that I will witness the truth behind the prophecy together with you all. If you need me, just call on me at my place. I'll be there, Mona. That was really unilluminating. Thanks, Mona. Bennett. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Before you came to me with this prophecy, it never even crossed my mind that I could be a part of this. Well, as you all know, I'm probably the last person you'd think of when it comes to guiding others. I still have a long way to go, and I'm still trying to figure out how to peacefully coexist with everything in this world. But if you're asking me about who can be of help, my friend Fischl and her friend Mona the Astrologist are both very knowledgeable and brave. I'd say they're probably the ones you're looking for. And that's my answer. Wishing you all good luck. Bennett, again, utterly useless. Next. Guide is too grand a title for me, but I'd love to be everyone's friend. It's something I think I'm good at, and I'm an attentive listener, so do let me know when you feel lost. To use an analogy, I'm like a torch out in the wild that will help illuminate everyone's path so long as it continues to burn bright. Everything written below is not meant for Cole. Dear Cole, if you're reading this, please turn away. 
I've been worried about Kole lately. She's recovered from the illness, but she still doesn't look all that cheerful. It feels like she still sings she can't let go of. Let me write down my wish here. I hope that Kole can uncover the secret behind the prophecy and find her happiness. Wherever she is and whoever she becomes, I'll always be a friend no matter what. We're not the savior and the saved, but simply good friends. Amber. Sweet letter, still useless. Mika. I hope this letter finds you all well. He's very polite. I didn't expect it to be asked such a question, which only caused quite a headache at first. Sorry, which caused quite a headache at first. I only know how to guide people in the geological sense, but on the journey of life, I'm still a lost kid who needs the guidance of others. But upon seeing your question, I immediately knew where, what I can help with. I tried drawing a map showing vegetation distribution for Mr. Tignani and Ms. Cole, as well as a dragon spotting calendar for Mr. Sino. Both are attached below. In the next few days, I will need to patrol with the captain and draw maps for Ms. Lisa, so I can only support you with my well wishes. My apologies. Please forgive me. I hope the map in the list will be of some help to you, Mika. Again, I find that utterly useless. One who would never lie. Sino. You are correct to assume that I seldom lie. This has to do with my upbringing. As a desert dweller who has been living within the academia since my childhood, what did you do with your childhood, by the way? My unusual identity and your parents, siblings, cousins, pets? Anything unusual? <laughs> my unusual identity makes it hard for others to trust me. And why do you have white hair? That seems genealogically, biologically, genetically uh, unlikely, given your uh, heritage. And it would have been harder still if I was not honest. As a result, I learned to talk less and speak no more than what is necessary. Uncovering the secret behind the prophecy may come with its perils. If you need someone who would never lie, I can join you. Okay, well, that's... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, that's a fair answer. I must make one thing clear first. I am not someone who would never lie. Agreed. After hearing your question, I thought about many things in the past in earnest and recalled many occasions upon which I lied. I often made up make up excuses to avoid choir practice. I also tell white lies too, sometimes to make myself happy and other times to allow myself to give up on some struggles. The nicest lie I ever came up, I've ever come up with, sorry, I keep trying to change the tense than the way she's got it written, I should just read it as written. The nicest lie I've ever come up with is the one I told Varka, that I didn't want to stay in Mondstadt. Varka responded with another lie, and that was his advice to me. Your current abilities are not suited to life beyond Mondstadt's borders. Aww. Aww. That's... I, I want to go more into this situation. I can't be the answer to this question, but I suggest that you consider what never lying actually means. Does it mean to never deceive or to never lie with an ill intent? See, that's, that, that's exactly what I was pointing out last time. Actually, it was the time before last time, but you get the point. Um, I was leaning more towards to never lie with ill intent, being more pertinent than just not lying ever. It's a pity that I'm not the one you're looking for, but I believe that someone who meets the requirements will turn up. Good luck, Rosaria. Reza. I asked my teacher Lisa to write this letter. Oh, yeah, I knew he couldn't write. It's much better than the ones I wrote. Many thanks. I don't lie. I trust you. Come to me when you need me. I will always be there for you, Reza. I'm thinking Sato is a better option, but thanks. And finally, a legend that never ends. Lisa. Legends were created by humans. In that sense, no legend endures forever, and all stories must end in regret someday. But as long as a good story lives in people's hearts, it does in some way live on forever. That's the conclusion I've come to after years of reading, anyway. Best of luck, little cuties. Lisa, I... I understand where you're coming from. I 100% I understand. So that's not a bad letter. Clee! Mermaid's travel guides, but she did have friends who wrote fairy tales, so Clee's heard of that a story its author spends her whole life writing will always be a good one. Okay, cute, but not very useful. Collie. I think a legend that never ends should be a story filled with hopes and dreams. It works like a baton, baton, whatever, that's passed on from one person to the next, offering something meaningful to everyone that it touches. I was once greatly encouraged by such stories, so I think I'll be going with this answer. Collie. I'm done. I'm done. Talk to Sue Chris. Sue Chris? What happened this time? Let me quickly summarize what we found out about a flower that is not of this world. Bruh. Are you telling me I didn't have to read those? Tainari believes that on closer examination, it might be logically paradoxical. While Albedo says that his answer would be better discussed at length in person. As for my answer, 
I think a clock in the shape of a flower would constitute one that is not of this world. I really don't see how you came to that conclusion, and I still strongly disagree. Here's what we've gathered regarding a guide who will never get lost. Mona said that she'd like to join us in uncovering the secret behind mm -hmm. the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Well, then it suggests Fischl, Mona, or the Traveler as potential candidates. Did he suggest a Traveler? I might have tuned out while I was reading Bennett's letter. I thought he just suggested Fischl or Mona. Yeah. Mika didn't submit much, but he did draw a vegetation map for Master Tainari and wrote up a dragon spotting calendar for Sino. Amber also wrote in. She said that she sees herself as nobody's guide, but everybody's friend. As for one who would never lie, Rosaria removed herself from consideration. Do I get to choose? But both Razor and Sino are willing to support us in our search. Is that going to affect anything? Timaeus seems to have forgotten to write to us. I'm not surprised. And finally, this is what we've gathered on a legend that never ends. Glee said that her mom has a number of friends who like to write storybooks. Lisa believes that legends live forever in people's hearts. I think that for a legend to be never ending, it has to be filled with hopes and dreams and actively pass from one person to the next. So, what are the answers to the four riddles then? Uh, you're really smart, Paimon. I bet you can figure it all out in no time. Or, let's all share our thoughts on what we think the answers might be. Wait! Wait for me! I'm waiting. Oh, Timaeus, what brings you here? I'm sorry, I really am. The time just got away from me and I didn't get around to writing that letter. However, I'm happy to announce that I think I can be the one who would never lie. It's all good. I've, I've already got my volunteer. You can go be lovestruck again. Huh? This is kind of sudden. Not that we don't trust you, Timaeus, but, um, could you elaborate a little after you catch your breath? Uh, of course, of course. <sighs> Do you still remember the time I, uh, um, collaborated with a certain Miss Ying R? Nope. <laughs> Remind me. Well, basically, she helped me out a lot with my research into potion making once, and, well, we've stayed in touch through letters ever since. I don't remember this at all. Wait, so Ying R is the girl from Lila that Sucrose mentioned earlier? Oh. Okay. We always assumed you were hard at work every time we saw you at the crafting bench. So you've just been writing letters to Ying Ar the whole time? Ying Ar. Ying Ar. The only lady coming to mind is the perfume lady. <laughs> just not her. I don't know who Ying Ar is. Uh, no. I mean, not all the time. I've done some work too. A and anyway. Our correspondence covers a lot of serious topics, like perfumes, Wait. potions, alchemy. The first thing he lists is perfumes. That's, the perfume lady is the only person I can think of who could possibly be called Ying. Anyway, a few yeah. months ago, I made a vow to the heavens that I will be true to myself and never utter an insincere word until the day that I've managed to win Miss Ying R's heart. So, at Star Snatch Cliff, you were picking Cecilia's as a gift for Ying R? Well, that's right. The Cecilia flower is said to represent a once wayward heart, transformed by the power of love. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a better flower to give than that. I know full well that Miss Ying R is far more knowledgeable than I in both the ways of the world and the ways of our craft, but I thought I should make the effort for once and put myself out there. Um, which brings me to the subject of the last few days and the Windbloom Festival. I thought it was time for me to invite Miss Ying R to Mondstadt. But yesterday, Albedo told me that Sucrose has been working hard to help another girl achieve her dream. And? <gasps> How's that affecting you? And when I went to take a look at our roster, I saw that she'd done my remaining work for me. I feel incredibly guilty. Okay. I'm kind of lost to see your point to this conversation, but okay. I've been spending all of my time in my own fantasy world while everyone else has been bending over backwards to help other people. Mm. How could I ever hope to be worthy of Miss Ying R's love if I'm so selfish? I mean, yes, selfishness isn't attractive, but the fact that you're considering it's a matter of worthiness 
kind of tells me you're not really for a relationship because you're not going into it with the correct mindset. No one needs to be worthy of another. That That's putting someone on a pedestal and that is not healthy for a romantic relationship. Oh, Timaeus. And that's why I've decided to join Well, you're not welcome. I'm sorry. I want to take Sano instead. He's more fun. But then what about Yingar? Even though I don't understand his jokes. Yeah. Haven't you been planning this for over a month now? You said you were going to invite her to Mondstadt. Wait, we're in the Windblown Festival and you still haven't invited her? You do know that she has to make arrangements for her living and her job and then she has to travel here, which takes time, and you still haven't invited her. I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, well, yes. I, I did mention in my letters that I'd like her to visit, which is why I just sent her another gift with my hand-picked wind blooms, along with a handwritten letter. You, you do know that the flowers can, like, wither by the time she gets them, right? I explained that a matter of great importance has presented itself, to which I must devote my full attention for the time being. As soon as it's resolved, I'll make haste to Liyue to pick her up in person. You better hope the festival hasn't finished before then. I made sure to package the gift and letter with the greatest care. All I can do now is hope that she'll understand. Point being, please know that I sincerely want to support you in this endeavor. Plus, I think I'm an honest person. As far as I recall, I don't think I've told a single lie in my life. <sighs> How to say this? For someone who's so blithe and is like, oh, I don't think I've told a single lie my whole life. Yeah, you sure about that? It just kind of, it feels insincere, but you're like, you know, I'm, I'm in my, what is he, in his 20s, uh, and he's never told a single lie. Even when he was a kid, not even when he was a teenager, he hasn't told a single lie. Nobody can definitively say that, sir. And that is why I don't trust you for this role. At least Sino is aware of his situation, but you're just gay and blithe, and I don't like it because I can't trust it. <laughs> I want the person who is cautious and hyper aware and focused on situations rather than the person who's just unaware. <laughs> well, you certainly convinced Paimon with that. Speech. Didn't convince Don't me. We won't let your determination go to waste. If this game would actually let me have a choice, I would. Thank you, Timaeus. Ah, oh, thank you, everyone. I promise to do everything I can to help. Like, Timaeus, you're great. In small doses. I don't know that I really want an entire quest line revolving around you. I don't need to see that much of you. Okay, so it looks like we found our one who would never lie. Great! Let's keep it up! On to the other three! After some discussion, the group decides on a final pick for each part of the prophecy. Okay. Everyone gathers in front of something. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just checking out who we've got here. So we did end up picking Mona and Albedo. Don't know about Clee's here, but we'll take Clee. I would have preferred Lisa, but we'll take Clee, um, and I would have preferred Sino over Timaeus. We have with us here the flower, the guide, the legend, and Timaeus. I like how he, he, he's named. He doesn't get a noun. <laughs> uh, I really think this... I'm all for interactive games. For games where your choices matter. And that's your choices matter capitalized. <laughs> I like things where your choices have impact on the game. That's why I want to write a TTRPG where there is just so much branching off. Because really, when oh, this is so off topic, but when you play tabletop role playing games that are like pre written campaigns, you, you are pretty railroaded in what you do. There is a story to tell. You go from point A, you can go to point B, and then you, you finish up. That It's pretty railroaded. But I want to write a tabletop RPG where it gives scope for choice and option within the main plot line. Um, so I very much like the concept of choice and consequence and just the freedom of choice. Not enough games do that because it's hard. It's really hard to get it done effectively. But for this instance, I just think that, you know, the people we pick aren't going to have that big of an impact. It's just going to be bits of dialogue that's going to change. And maybe, maybe, maybe to me, it's just going to be a bigger role because it seems to be revolving around him. But the other three... It, it, they kind of just seem like they're interchangeable except for dialogue. So I would have liked to have been able to pick my my composition of my party, so to speak, uh, for this quest line. Uh, they've bought, uh, 
I was trying to say therefore and thereby at the same time. Uh, thereby choosing my outcome, the, the, the way I want the story to go in that sense. And it's only going to change dialogue. It's not going to be some big groundbreaking thing. But, you know, I had options. Instead of letting me pick my options, you picked for me. And I just don't like that. It kind of takes away player agency. And I'm just sitting here watching a cutscene rather than having something that's interactive. Ooh, that's one of my biggest problems with this game. It's not interactive enough. Yeah, I'm not going to expand on that. I'll be here for all day. But that's, yeah, that I would have liked to have chosen my people is what I'm trying to say. Huh? Why did you only say Timaeus's name? You should say my name too. Uh, no, no, Clay, it's actually better that we called you the legend. It's a lot cooler than calling him Timaeus. Clee here, this all somehow feels like we're getting ready for a field trip. I mean, I think we are, but I see where you're going with this, yeah. Kids aren't my favorite either, Mona. Well, there's nothing wrong with a more relaxed atmosphere, is there? There's a difference between a relaxed atmosphere and a child-friendly atmosphere, all right, Albedo? They are two very different things. Albedo, have you figured out your answer? Of course. We will soon see if my hypothesis has any merit. I don't like that we're going into this without you explaining what your hypothesis is. I don't like going in blind. Actually, I'm still feeling a little nervous. Ah, you're good over it once we get on with it. Me too. But weren't you all fired up just a moment ago? Right? Uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's do this. That was so unconvincing. Actually, I'm a little worried too. About what? Deep breaths. Deep breaths. I don't understand. What are we getting worried about? We're not doing anything. We're standing here chatting. I know what you're feeling. Saying anything becomes so much harder when there are so many people watching. That wasn't what she, Huh? She wasn't talking about her, her introverted nature or her insecurity around other people. She was literally talking about the prophecy and what's coming next. Well, Moving on. does anyone know the exact location of where we're headed? Yes. Or should I do a reading on my scry glass? So this is the problem I have with this. Venti's given us the answer of where we're going already, but weren't we supposed to get the answer of where we're going by gathering up the four elements of the riddle? But instead of getting the answer from the riddle, we're just using external knowledge. Does that not feel weird to anybody else? In other words, they couldn't find the location without having someone already know the answer? Hmm. According to the prophecy, once we've figured out the answer, we should test it at the Lantern of Utmost Joy. Wait, but where is this lantern? Why is it taking you days to get to this question, Carly? You should have been questioning it back when you were questioning the clues to the riddle. <sighs> Some people have no intellect. Oh, we know something about that. Oh, uh, why couldn't you let them find it themselves? Why did you have to spoil everything? I've already found out where it is. What? Don't look at me like that. It wasn't a choice I made. You make up a story about how you discover the location by divining the- oh, pfft, wow. yeah, right. That's amazing. You really know how to do everything under the sun. I can't believe you bought that, Sucrose. Then we'll let you lead the way. Alberto totally doesn't buy it. Follow me. This is it. We're off to find the secret location of the Lantern of Utmost Joy. Next thing you know, it's two meters up the road by Timmy's Bridge. <laughs> it's pigeons at the secret boss, hiding the lantern. Go to where the Lantern of Utmost Joy is. Well, it depends on where it is. It's by Falcon Coast. Okay, well, it's not really much of a better option if I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, no. Is it on top of the hill or under the hill? The scribe's work is simple, which is exactly why <laughs> oh. I took the position. Knew it. But there's nothing here. Does this just show us the location of where the lantern is? According to the map, it should be somewhere around here. But there's not going to be a lantern just Let lying me around. So I'm assuming we're going to see something, maybe a landform that looks like a lantern? That'd be too obscure, Aww. don't mind me. I don't see any lanterns here. Hmm. Now that I think about it, the prophecy didn't say anything about what the lantern of utmost joy actually looks like, right? Nope, it just named Maybe it. Leave over Traveler, Oops, sorry. Are you trying to figure out something else from the paper? Apparently, yes. Vendy's note here says we should look up and seek the answers from the sky. Hyman's reading too! Uh, huh? It says to look up! 
How high are we talking? But, uh, but there's nothing above us! Uh, the wind didn't trick us, did it? I'm trying to think of what it could mean. A lantern is light. The slip also says, now you should recite the incantation. Is he just trying to make me look stupid? Come and take a look at this. Place the squirrel on the back of the pointy-eared cat, and a pious puppy will open the doors to show you the way. Huh. Paimo read the whole thing out loud, but nothing's happening. Well, either we all have to read it out loud together, or the Chosen Four need to read it out loud together. It's my deduction. <gasps> look! Look! The wind is blowing! Eh, it's just venti. What a strong wind current. Where the hell did that come from? Well, let's write it up and see where it leads us. That wasn't there two seconds huh? ago. W we'll have to fly up there? You don't glide? Uh, can someone carry me with them? It's monster and you don't glide? Here. Doesn't that weigh down the glider? Okay, we're having a tea party with the mysteriously appearing island. Oh my god, this is Alice again. 